recording. Is it on now? Is the recording on now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jenkins Advocacy and Outreach SIG meeting. Today is June 30th. On the agenda, I have um, welcome fatigue. So we'll, we'll chat with you in a little bit. We'll get a GSOC update from Jean-Marc, Scale 19X update from me, and DevOps World uh, from, from all of us. Um, anything else we need to add to the agenda? All right. OK, so Fatih is um, the new GM for CDF. Welcome again. We're happy to have you. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'm, I guess we can go around the table and introduce ourselves. And then Fatih, you can tell us a little bit about you. Uh, what is your vision for CDF and how could we play together uh, going forward? So I'll start with myself. So I'm Alyssa. I've been a longtime contributor with the Jenkins Project. Um, and right now, my main focus is on driving events and activities for Jenkins. Jean-Marc? Well, hello. So I'm uh, Jean-Marc Mason, this is the way it's uh, uh, pronounced uh, correctly. I'm located in Brussels, Belgium, where we speak many languages. Um, and uh, I'm what's called the old generation. So full disclosure, I'm two years away from retirement. And uh, although I worked for more than nearly 30 years for the same company and was gearing up for happy retirement, I realized that I was not too old for adventure and trying to change things. And, uh, and so uh, five years ago, I decided to change from security but boring to adventure and uh, joined CloudBees for, um, and, and because I've been working with Jenkins all those years and, and love to help people uh, and share the, the nice things I, I learned. So had various functions and joined the community team a year ago. That's it, Alyssa. Thanks, Jean-Marc. Bruno? Hey, uh, Bruno Nathan from uh, France in the very northern part of France, just next to Jean-Marc, uh, next to a city called Lille. So we're almost neighbors. And I'm pretty new uh, to Jenkins, in fact, but I've been working around CICD for quite a long time now uh, with GitLab. Uh, and now uh, my main focus is about the community, of course, uh, developers, users, and so on. And my hobbies when it comes to Jenkins is about uh, continuous integration and uh, deployment for mobile devices. So for more mobile development, and uh, if I ever get time to for um, embedded platforms. So we'll see. Thank you. Thanks for now, Mark. I'm Mark Waite. I'm the Jenkins. I'm the community team manager at CloudBees. I'm a member of the Jenkins board. I'm the Jenkins documentation officer, and I also maintain a few Jenkins plugins. And Fatih, it's great to have you with us. Thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks, Mark, and thanks for passing the invite. I think that's like we met during CDCon, and I was like, "Can I join one of your calls?" And you sent the invite directly. So thanks a lot. So when it comes to me, as you know, I just, I recently joined CDF. My first day at job was June 1st. Uh, I joined from Ericsson, which you probably know, uh, this uh, telco vendor. And I've been mostly uh, involved in continuous integration, continuous delivery type of activities from end user side. And well, if you look at Jenkins contributor stats, you can't find me there because I probably haven't done made any contributions to Jenkins because like my focus was around more how to say cultural social aspects of continuous integration continuous delivery rather than focusing on tools a lot because when uh, to tools and technologies we start talking about them that takes the conversation to different place so that's how I start contributing to open source originally in 
on the Linux Foundation networking communities, which is like Ericsson Telecom and or networking. So that is how I started around 2013-14. And I was kind of surprised to see uh, how much work that team has to in telecom and probably similar in other industries as well. And I traveled across different communities. I started in one of the projects called uh, Open Platform for Network Functions Virtualization. And we, we use Jenkins and I think the community still uses Jenkins. And then I started contributing to some other networking communities and then OpenStack and they, I joined OpenStack community while they are moving from Jenkins to Zool. So I was kind of a witness to that transformation. And then around, I think, 2017, 18, we start talking about how we can make sure that we have broader collaboration within CICD ecosystem, which result in a project called cross-community continuous integration. Because if you look at different communities, they all use different technologies. And sometimes, again, it is difficult to bring people to higher level to see why we are doing CI and CD at first place. And that resulted in me joining Continuous Data Foundation because it was established almost around 2019. And since 2019, I've been contributing to Continuous Data Foundation mainly through uh, special interest groups. First group was the special interest group interoperability because like if you look at organizations or communities, they use more than one technology and it's not specific to CICD orchestrators and so on, like artifact repositories, SCM systems, they all interact with each other and that kind of became a problem for companies like Ericsson because like if you don't have a you know a, an alignment or I don't want to call it standardization but kind of standardization then it makes it very difficult for organizations to establish and to end pipelines which starts from developer workstation and hits the production systems and that group special interest group interpreted was very successful not because I was taking part on it but because there were lots of people with same concerns. And then that group result in three other special interest groups, special interest group events, special interest group best practices, special interest group software supply chain. And then after two years, I said, it's time for me to step down and someone else can bring fresh ideas and new perspectives. And then I uh, started working on software supply chain area because of my past history with security topics. And that's what we formed around February now. I am co-chairing that group as well within CDF. And more specifically, Jenkins, I had a master's thesis project. Uh, I was mentoring two students during my Ericsson days around 2014. And I think I had meetings with Kosuke and a few others from Jenkins community about our idea around achieving highly available Jenkins, active, active Jenkins setup. So that's, again, that did, didn't become a contribution, but that is available on Google. If you search for it, you will see the work we have done there, but that is like almost 10 years old. It's not probably relevant anymore, but that is kind of who I am. Sorry for long introduction. And I'm here to learn and see how we can collaborate better. Uh, Fatih, can I ask a, a dumb question? I, I know I could research it, but maybe best to hear it from the horse's mouth. Uh, directly what are the kind of companies or projects or entities that are part of cdf well again this now if you ask me this the question before i joined cdf my answer would have been the same so just to note that now <laughs> it has become my job so don't think that i am my response is like that one of the coolest things that made me join Confidence Data Foundation as contributor three years ago is the diversity of companies, like on industries, I should say. Like if you look at the member list, that's what I looked when it was announced first and all time I followed that as well. Like you have web scale companies there. You have like Google is there, you have Oracle Cloud, and then you have like Netflix is there. Uh, you have Telco, Huawei is there, you have finance, Fidelity mm -hmm. and Capital One, they are there. We have like vendors from CICD space, they are there. It's like, it's because that is kind of confirming my thinking when I was joining CDFS contributor. This content integration, content delivery, DevOps, or whatever you are calling, that requires 
broader collaboration, not specific to a single industry, not specific to a certain type of product structure, like it could be embedded, it could be cloud native, it could be telco software, it could be mobile banking up on your phone. So that is my answer. I hope I'm answering your question yeah. correctly. So like, again, the other thing is like, I am a true believer of cross community collaboration. So that's why we named one of the projects we formed like a few years ago, cross community continuous integration. That is happening within continuous data foundation. But another important aspect of continuous data foundation is cross co pollination across industries. Because if you think mm -hmm. telco, telco is still highly specialized, you know, uh, vertically integrated. And when you go to a vendor, you are stuck with that vendor because it's not opened up yet. But it doesn't mean it won't open up. So, but if you compare it with web scalers or other companies who are really on the, you know, ahead of the other industries, CDF gives a lot of opportunities for different industries to come and join, learn from others, at the same time, kind of question other organizations approach because what worked for that company or that industry may not work well in another industry. And that could open up additional opportunities because then that could make what is available even better by bringing new requirements or addressing new challenges. So cross collaboration across companies, industries, and communities is how I see Continuous Data Foundation. Okay, thank you very much. Great. So Fatih, I, I, I will take up exception to one of your one of your comments. You said you are not a Jenkins contributor. And I, I take strong exception because you were a key leader in the event specification that was used in the Google Summer of Code project in 2021. If I remember correctly, the events work that you did was the seed for that Google Summer of Code. Okay, admittedly, we don't have your name on any pull requests in Jenkins, but then again, many people have no name, none of their name nowhere on any pull request, and yet they are still very much a valued contributor. So your events work, for instance, and now, now that Fidelity is interested in doing more with the CD event specification and, and bringing back the cloud events plugin to, to interesting ways, I think you'll again be more involved maybe than you might have expected. Well, so so, so from, from my voice, thanks for your contributions to Jenkins, even if you didn't realize you were contributing to Jenkins. <laughs> thanks for highlighting that. That made me really happy. If I contributed a little bit, yeah, thank you. So Fatih, uh, what is your vision uh, for CDF? So I think like, again, I always put community first because like we can, you know, uh, think about great things and cool ideas and strategize, strategize forever. But if we don't have community support, then we can't realize all those good ideas. And I think Jenkins is a community that could be looked as an example because it has a great community and like just random number, 70% of entire world is still running on Jenkins. So that shows how important is the community because those people the community made jenkins reality and moving it forward so one of the key things we are focusing right now is to make sure how we best serve the communities not just cdf community itself it's six but also the projects that are under cdf umbrella are served in a best possible way because if we make developers happy, they will be enjoying what they are doing. They will be taking part in all these you know, different new innovations, if we put, put that way, that will open up out of new opportunities. So community is one of the key things and this will become more visible with the work we start. We started you know, providing, uh, writing guidelines, for example, or making community center so everyone thrives around community, everyone feels welcome to community, everyone knows how they can join the community and so on. And secondly, the other aspect is I think organizations like end users, they are doing lots of work 
behind the scenes because sometimes they look at what is available in communities, they get some uh, open source project, open technology, they try it. Sometimes they don't find what they are looking there and they go and try enterprise solutions and they may not be good for them either. So they end up building platforms internally. How we can make sure that we bring our end users like to stage in different ways and let them speak about what they are doing and why they are doing those things. Like one example could be like end user case studies. So they describe what they are doing, which could be useful for communities because then communities look at what those end users had to develop themselves for thousands of people, large organizations, and they can perhaps take that, community could take that and perhaps bring that to life as part of open source technologies. Or suppliers or other organizations could look at what end users are doing and they can provide solutions for those things. So end users, making them talk, sharing their challenges and helping other organizations that are on their way to embrace continuous delivery and DevOps is another thing. And technology, that is critical. We have lots of things happening across all these communities. And this, this is not just specific to Continuous Delivery Foundation. Lots of innovation, lots of developments happening in CNCF. Lots of things start happening in OpenSSF. How we can make sure that we can plug into those conversations? How we can make sure that Continuous Delivery Foundation is seen as the place to collaborate on continuous delivery and DevOps, whether you know developing best practices or developing new technologies. So positioning CDF by you know getting support from our communities, getting support from our end users, and finally the other aspect is governing board. We have we need, we must have their support as well because they are investing in this community. So we must make sure that. We have full transparency and full communication across all these different you know, entities, projects, communities, and user organizations, and the governing board members. So things could be discussed transparently, openly. So we can bring different things to different forums and find best way to push the domain forward. So in summary, I think personally, Continuous Delivery Foundation is the place to be if people want to work in continuous delivery, if people want to innovate in continuous delivery, if people want to learn new things. And that is what I hope to achieve. And I met with lots of people during CDCon, one of them, Mark and Alisa, I met with you there as well. I, I think the excitement I've seen there even though it was a smaller event compared to how it was in earlier years, people are really excited. That's what I felt. I am normally a pessimistic person. Like I, I try to take things with a pinch of salt, you know, but that event increased my hopes that we can achieve this. And that's why I was in Jenkins uh, project meeting there, also Tecton CD events to make sure that I can be like seen as part of those communities because I am part of the community. I want to stay part of as a, as a community. I want to contribute any way I can. So we can make the, we can create a shared vision across different communities and we can push domain forward and realize our vision together. So long story short, going back to what I said, I think we as a community should have a vision. And that's what we should work together. Any I know question? if I answered. Yeah. Question. Questions for Fatih at this point? So, um, so if, do you, so, I, I like what I'm hearing. Thank you so much. Um, I and I completely agree with you that you know community is super important, end user is important. Um, having them tell a story. So one of the things that I did in the past year was create this um, 
um, we call it Jenkins is the way and where we collected stories, successful stories of how people use Jenkins. And we have like over a hundred of those stories. Um, so yes, keep up with that vision, if you will. And I think it'll, 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 um, it'll be great. And it'll be helpful to other people that that's want to join the, um, the CDF and being a user. Um, now, as far as how do you see us working together to better support each other? Um, I guess the question now is the how, if you, if you have that yet, if you don't have that yet, it's fine. I know you're still new, so. We have some ideas actually, like how, one of the things I heard when I talked to different people, they say they don't know what's happening within different projects or communities. They want to make sure that we highlight the latest developments the communities are doing or the issues they may be having or the cool things they are bringing to life. And Lori Loruso, I don't know if any of you had a chance to meet with her. She mm -hmm. just became, yeah, we were in the yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were yes. the meetings. Exactly. Yeah. She has really great ideas. Like when I met with her in Austin during CDGO, that was kind of another turning point for me to become more optimistic because like she knows and she worked in community setting for a long time and she has ways to bring these different communities together and make sure that we are picking communities brains because Many people have lots of ideas in their minds or in their brains, or they have concerns. It is important that we talk to not just communities, but whoever wants to talk to us, get them talk, put them you know, on the website and tell us your day as a Jenkins contributor, for example. That is one way to make sure that Jenkins or other communities we have within CDF become more visible. The other thing is like constant share of information. I met with Tim, uh, I think he's Jenkins release officer. And I said like, how can we provide updates about Jenkins more often? What is your release schedule? He said, we make quarterly LTS releases. And I was like, can we get regular updates from Jenkins comment that matches to your release schedule? So you can talk about new things, maybe you address the critical security vulnerability or you have really new cool plugin like CD events will happen hopefully. Talk about those things, which could attract interest to CDF, to Jenkins, to CD events and help grow the community. I think, again, to summarize, we have to keep talking. We have to keep communicating. Like, as I said, like, I want to join as many community meetings, as many Jenkins community meetings as possible. And please, like, it was great seeing all of you doing the meeting on Monday, but there are many more discussions happening within CDF community under different six or as part of technology side community. I think you should also try to take part in those conversations because some conversations that is happening there would have out of new opportunities for Jenkins community, like, one of the conversations was like intent-based pipelines. Who knows what that means? People are cooking stuff there. So if you are, can be present within CDF community, then you can bring that back to Jenkins community. So bridge the gap. I think that is the first thing, again, establish this well-working communication across different communities. And that will help us find other ways to collaborate as well. Uh, Fatih, I have a practical question related to your your last um, to your last point. Is you encourage us to uh, chime in or to listen to the various other meetings uh, to to improve and and make the the flow of information more efficient? How can we be informed? uh of of these what is the entry point because after one year uh cdf was for me a big black box and and where do i enter in it where where does it start how can i start pulling the, 
that the yarn is, out. Yeah, that is really great point. And one of the things we plan to work on is to make such information more visible. Like how one can join the community, which you know topics are currently being discussed within the community mm -hmm. and which groups are looking at, th at those topics. And I confess, I didn't know we had a community web page on CDF website. I was told recently that we have a community page, but that's not visible. So we have to make that visible. Mm -hmm. So, and the CDF website should be helping people to highlight such things. Okay, we are working on software supply chain area. How can we find that? It is not easy to find it. Like, yeah, thanks, Alisa. Like, if you go to community there, if you could, or join the community button, sorry, on uh, button there, down, uh, oh. join the community. So that is like mm -hmm. this page lists Slack community calendar, special interest groups, but I, I didn't see the page because I became blind looking at the web page too much. So here you mm -hmm. have a place where you can find different groups we have, different projects we have, but this must be input. Mm -hmm. This is the place where you can find that, but the main communication okay. happens on Slack and GitHub. So if you join CDF Slack and if you start watching certain repositories like SIG repos or project repos, then you will see the conversations happening there. For example, this uh, event, CD events specification is currently being developed within CD events organization on GitHub. And if you start watching various repos there, you will get notifications. But again, things will hopefully be improved. Okay. And there currently is you can, the yeah, you can okay. look at this page as the place to see where yeah. things are listed. Okay, very good hint. Okay, thank you, Ambal. Should have found it, but- uh, Yeah, I couldn't find it, so yeah. I failed to find it. I put the link to chat as well. I think I like how we have it on the, uh, on our Jenkins.io for how to, uh, how you can Overview. contribute. Uh, contribute or join? Is the overview. Um, overview. 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 When oh, you right want, Alyssa. Uh, that, yeah. that, yeah. The fact that it yeah. did not immediately appear for you is a hint that there's still much to improve. Much, yeah, much to improve. We, we need to do our homework there too. Right. Yeah. Lots. Yeah. This the whole successful web navigation is is a, a whole interesting problem. Yeah. Well, Fresh eyes are just, worth. Yeah. We just need to rework this probably. Because I mean, I, I'm on this page a whole lot because you know when I need to um, add events to GitHub and such um, on this page a lot, but I would not look for it under overview <laughs> because it says participate and contribute. Hey, you, 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 you hinted you, you didn't, you didn't find this by immediate navigation. We've got lots to improve. Yeah. Yeah. In one of the communities I was involved years ago, we created a simple like four step visual like showing mm. are you trying to you know work with this topic not topic level but are you trying to find the documents like trail trail what trail path was it called no showing different personas mm -hmm. and then click here kind of and that was on landing page start here kind of thing very obvious so if you yeah. click there then you end up on whatever resource you are looking at. But yeah, CDF websites will hopefully be improved coming period, yeah. Great. Well, I, I hijacked your meeting, sorry. No, not at all. No, no, I no, think no, this is no, good. No. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. for me, it's important, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions for Fatih? Um, well, it's related. Um, uh, one of the things that that uh, CDF provides is logistics for a couple of things, and uh, there have been rumors, uh, uh, unprecise and then precise. You know the migration about uh, to to Bevy, 
Yeah. Uh, and this has been raised, and uh, I hope we'll continue to work on that um, with Oli. And and it's it's what it's her first name is I Michelle. Is it Michelle? No, Lori. No, Lori. Uh, no, uh, yeah. No, so but with the, the the. Well, I think it's part of the outreach with um, the support of logistics. So I don't know who, who would be the main partner uh, um, there, but for us, it will be a very important project. Yeah. When David topic first came up, I think it was January or February, I asked similar questions like, how is this going to happen? And then we tried baby and we found some issues. We provide feedback for those things and they address some of those issues. And now, we also start talking with CNCF community they, because they, I think they either completed their migration or they are nearing the completion. So Michelle, as she summarized on Monday, we need to come up with a good transition plan. So all the communities know what is happening when and so on. And as she also said, like Zoom will stay if things don't work according to the plan we will come up with, then we will always some backup but yes baby is one of the top priorities we are working on i mean to work with baby supplier the company name is also mm -hmm. baby i believe to make sure that whatever the platform provides is what the communities need so we we don't just blindly embrace it we have to get things working for community and that requires us to have some trials or pilots for different projects, perhaps different groups. So they go and try things before the entire community on board the baby. So uh -huh. the transition would be smoother for the remaining parts of the community. And where will this be discussed? Who is driving and who owns? Currently, that? yeah, I, you can reach out to me if you have baby questions uh, because two of our team members are currently out of office and that is one of the conversations we will have when they are back uh, next week or week after next to make sure we have an individual who the communities could reach out to. But currently you can reach out to me and when we identify who should be the main contact person for baby, then we can help you find that person as well. It could because, be- well, yeah. yeah, sorry, I didn't want to-, to you. No, no, I, I'm done like, yeah. Okay, uh, because uh, seeing the size of the community and the connection we, we have and we're being on, on, the, the, on the cautious side, you know, the side where we, just in case we foresee a parachute in a submarine, because it might be useful. No, I'm exaggerating there, but we want to start early. Yeah. That we, that we learn the tool, that we know how it behaves, that we create a transition plan, that we start early enough our communication plan, uh, and that that we so so there is there is a yeah. project plan to set up yeah. for us. In in currently, uh, beside me getting excited on my side and writing down I, ideas and say we should do this and this and that, uh, we, we somewhere where well, it's disconnected. Because we don't yeah. don't know, we're learning, and, and so what I hear from you is, let's be patient for a couple of weeks, uh, and uh, yeah, but yeah, at least you know we're very interested. Yeah, in, yeah. In this. <laughs> when this topic came up, one of the things were like, oh, maybe we should ask projects to try this out. It was February, March during Techno Site Committee meeting, CDFTOC meeting. I said like instead of we ask the projects to try and kind of suffer because things don't work. Why don't we try ourselves as technical site committee? And I think CDFTOC was one of the first groups who started using BEVI. And that's, again, we need to put this type of information on a clear timeline. Okay, we tried CDFTOC, it worked for them for majority of things. Let's give a try with Jenkins Advocacy, this meeting, for example, just making it up, to move it to BEVI to see how it works or if it works. And then you also gain experience yourself by trying it out before you ask Jenkins community to start transitioning. And we can put this on a timeline. 
when is Jenkins yeah. going to try this? August, and then we line up others based on the outcomes from your trials, for perhaps. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. at, it's, first, it's you know, visible. we're we're waiting or or we're we're ready to be part of that, and uh, we wait for clarifications. Yeah. Yeah, I am meeting with Bevy next week, and one of uh -huh. uh, our teammates will be back from her time of week after next. So we should have some rough idea about how we are going to work with this during July. And, like and sorry kind of to, to, to bombard you with questions. Uh, if we continue to go to the outreach meetings, which is at least one of the meetings I can hold, uh, two will be informed of the progress and where we're standing. Is that the appropriate uh, channel? I can I can talk it's with not... Lori and Michelle to see if they consider Bevy as part of their you know outreach efforts because they have tons of other things to deal with as well. And I will get back to you with more information where this type of information is shared. Maybe this becomes a standing item for Technology Site Committee because this is high in the list we have to make sure the yeah. communities have all the tools at their hands working so they can continue you know moving forward but i will find out as well which forum is the place to discuss baby as well okay sorry Alyssa, to have put together yeah. I'm, I, i've been no, thinking no about worries. that <laughs> yeah i think we're jean marc and i we run the jenkins online meetup and that's one of our largest meetup groups and so we are a little bit worried because we don't know what Bevy looks like. Well, we probably should do our own research, but at this point we don't know and we haven't experienced it. So any kind of training would be helpful for us to put us at ease, if you yeah. will. Yeah. I will get back to it. It's good that Alisa and John, like I will be reaching out to you then about Bevy information, which you can share with others as well within the community. Great, thank you. Yeah. Good. Thanks, okay, guys. thank you. Okay, so moving on to the next items of our agendas, uh, GSOC update, John Mark? Yeah, I'll, because it, it was a very interesting discussion up to now, so I'll make my uh, part here uh, short, or at least we'll try. So the projects are now two weeks into uh, coding. Uh, they're making progress. Uh, I had a one-to-one -one chat with every contributor. And so the atmosphere uh, is good. Uh, and uh, the next milestone will be that we'll organize an online meetup. Uh, it has been decided for the 21st of uh, July, uh, where the GSOC projects will present to the community um, in more details what their project is about, where they're standing, uh, what has been achieved up to date, and if possible, uh, present a small demo or something um, uh, concrete, uh, something um, concrete, I don't know if it's an English yeah. word, uh, about what, what they did. Um, I tried and explored the possibility as was done uh, the years before to invite uh, the, uh, uh, the GSOC contributors to DevOps World, our contributors and get sponsoring uh, for that. Uh, so uh, I wrote a summary uh, of that research to you, uh, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. The summary of that in a nutshell is that uh, for various reasons, uh, ranging from uh, COVID quarantine rules coming back to the country to school uh, assignment and constraints, uh, because not all countries are aligned with uh, July, August being the holidays, uh, school holidays. So uh, in India, for instance, uh, school starts uh, uh, beginning of August, uh, for instance, they will not be able to uh, uh, answer positively to our invitations. Uh, 
on top of that, uh, the the amount of uh, sponsoring that would be required for that is quite high. So uh, this is something that we would need to discuss. Is it worthwhile or not? Uh, so worthwhile, yes. But in the current conditions, uh, the world situation, the coming crisis, uh, economical crisis and so on, um, I am a little reluctant to continue pushing the effort because there will only be two that could answer the invitation and it's a lot of money. So although I promote the idea, I find it's an incredible asset to make these young people grow and uh, uh, take their place within the community. It's a, a great experience. On the other side, um, the funding and possible sponsoring outside of the Jenkins uh, project is scarce and I don't want to waste or spend money that that would put us in problems. Yeah. So it, it was my point understood, Alyssa, because I was yes. cautious with, I with that. Yes. The flight ticket from India is, is 1,500 uh, US dollars right. plus uh, lodging plus the rest. And it's, it starts to add up. Right, right. So, question is, um, do we decide here to move on with me promoting and uh, addressing the Jenkins government's board for the funding? Or do we decide here to put that sponsoring idea uh, in the fridge for this year and see how things evolve? So I still need to, um, I'm waiting to hear back from Michelle about last year's stipend or stipend, uh, GSOC stipend, that there was $3,000 that we received and it fell into the CDF bucket. So I'm still okay. waiting for Michelle to confirm whether that $3,000 is still there. Okay. Well, and, and for, for precision, Alyssa, Five of the six projects last year were Jenkins projects, not all six of them. So logically, they might say 2,500 of the 6,000 should go to the Jenkins project, the other 500 to the other project that hosted a Google Summer of Code project last year. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I wait for your feedback there, Alyssa, and then we yeah. put it back on the table and, and we, we see. Now, honestly, I'm defending them. And, and I, will, I will be their advocate, but I'm yeah. also a family father. I know we need to be cautious with money. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll chat about this next time. Yep. Okay, um, thank you. So this, this is all for me. Thank you. So scale 19X, it, this is Southern California Linux Expo that is taking place end of July. Um, Fatih, this is an open source uh, conference. I know the Jenkins project has a booth there and because we are an open source project, we get a booth space for free. So it's a 10 by 10 booth space. Um, I know that CNCF is there um, every year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we, so we plan to be there this year. We will have, uh, Mark has a speaking slot there as well. Um, Kosuke is going to be joining us at the booth because he has a speaking slot and so he's going to hang out for the weekend with his family and just hang, us, hang out at the booth with us. Um, I think in previous year when we were there in person, you know, uh, I worked with Jackie if she had like uh, CDF content that she wanted help us to help pass out, I'd be more than happy to have that available at our booth. So keep that in mind, but we'd love to have you join us if possible. Uh, typically they, they expect about 3000 attendees. Um, given that now we are you know, still in the COVID um, area, we don't know what to expect yet. 
And then our next biggest conference that we that the Jenkins project will be attending is DevOps World, and that is in um, Orlando, Florida, end of September. Now we I know that the events team has extended an offer to CDF. Um, and I think fatigue at the moment where you you don't have plans for to in attend to attend, but I highly suggest that you just you know come check it out. Um, it's it's a really it's a big event for us. Uh, that is we where we usually have the biggest Jenkins gathering. Uh, we will have a contributor summit before the conference days. We usually have workshops, Jenkins workshops. Um, and just a lot of Jenkins talks. We also have a very big booth uh, that Cloud Bees has graciously uh, sponsored us. And it's this year it's a 10 by 20 booth space and they're helping us to pay for that, for the design and all that stuff. Um, so we use that booth space as to educate people to do lightning talks to um, to help answer questions. So it's kind of like our ask the expert area. So so even if CDF doesn't plan to be there, I highly recommend that perhaps you can join or somebody on the team from CDF join because I know that the team is new. Um, but just get a, a view of you know what it's like. But I know that when uh, Tracy and Jackie was leading the CDF, um, it, it was quite um, a good experience for CDF. Um, so I will check yeah, with my team to see if anyone uh, can make there. Yeah, we love to have somebody there. Um, let me see. So the, 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 the events team has given us a discount code that we can share with the community. Right now, we're still in the uh, early bird Early session. Bird, yeah. yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm just throwing this out there, but I'm not really promoting it yet. So I won't promote that until after July 6. But after July, on July 6, the rate goes up to over $1,000. And so the discount that they're giving us is the price will be 950. And that is all that I have. Anything else? I have one open question for Fatih unrelated to Jenkins advocacy, but related to Jenkins infrastructure. So we may need your help to enter into an agreement with one of our providers. Uh, they've been a, a long-term open source sponsor, uh, but they have uh, some additional conditions that they're putting on most of the people or on the organizations that they sponsor. And one of those is a commercial agreement. I assume I work with you, Fatih, to, to start that conversation because commercial agreements typically would not come from the Jenkins project, but from its parent organization. Yeah, please, yeah, any material if you could share before we start working on it, I can read and educate myself and ask around to see who yeah, I can Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give you an email summary, yeah. long, long and boring email summary of, of all the history that I know and what the parts and pieces are so that you understand the context. Uh, just wanted to be sure that you're the right contact for that. So I'll start with you. And then if you need to deflect me to someone else, you certainly can. Yes, thanks, yep. Great, thank you. Great, thank you everybody. Have a good evening, have a good okay. day. Thank you very much for- Bye-bye everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.